Hey everyone, welcome back to the North Dakota Teaching Podcast. I'm seriously so excited that you're here. We just made it through the holidays and now is your chance to kind of get ready for everything the new year has to offer. I hope you're excited for today's episode. And as always, if you're a first year teacher and you're looking for some new teacher tips, jump down below. You can grab 10 tips that are going to help you be a rock star this year in your classroom. Okay, I'll see you inside the show. Welcome to the North Dakota Teaching Podcast. Whether you're a first year teacher, veteran teacher, or just a mom trying to gain some new insights, you are right where you are meant to be. Kayla Durkin, founder of the Blossoming Teacher Course, is passionate about helping new teachers blossom into the teacher they were born to be. Kayla wants to help inspire teachers to be their best self whether that means sharing about personal or professional development, self-care, or the latest and most effective teaching strategies. Through this podcast, you will hear from real teachers sharing their stories about teaching, all with one main goal in mind, to be able to make an impact and help other teachers blossom. And with that, here is your host, Kayla Durkin. Hey, welcome back. Today we have Miranda and she is seriously the cutest first grade teacher ever. I'm so excited for you to get to know her. So let's bring her on the show. Hey, Miranda, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you so much. How's your day going? It's going really well. We just finished wrapping up and so we are just really excited for next week. I'm so excited for what I've planned. Awesome. Why don't you tell us what you have planned? Or actually first, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Okay, so this is um, my second year teaching. Um, Technically, it's still my first year because last year during COVID, I did not get to complete my year. So I still feel so brand new. Um, I graduated from Florida Gateway College with my bachelor's degree, and I just got accepted into University of West Florida actually yesterday for my master's program. Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. So I am... 23. I will actually be 24 very soon. Um, I don't feel like it at all. I think it's just that young spirit, which is perfect for first grade, as everyone tells me. Um, I live in Florida. I've actually grown up in Florida my whole life, but I dream of traveling around the United States. I want to visit North Carolina and Tennessee and Washington, D.C. So that's just a little bit about me. I don't have any pets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't have any pets either, but I wish I did. <laughs> I do too. I'm just never home. I want a cat so bad. <laughs> That's honestly being a first year teacher or being any teacher finding time to do something as simple as take care of a pet like that's a hard thing to do. I just feel bad for leaving them at home all day and not having, you know, a super long lunch break to go home and check on them. Right. And um When I was in the classroom, my lunch break was 25 minutes, and I lived 25 minutes from the school, so that wasn't going to happen. So ours this year is 25 minutes, and I live 10 minutes away, so by the time I got there, it would be my whole lunch break, and I would just feel super rushed. Oh, absolutely. There wouldn't really be any time to play. No, and that's not fair. Yeah, so you just got into your master's program. What are you getting your master's in? So I am getting my master's in curriculum and instruction. Fantastic. So where is that kind of going to lead you? Are you hoping to bring you into a new job or a new role within your building? So I think I will stay where I'm at, um, but it just opens different doors and it just opens different opportunities to help manage what curriculum that we will actually bring into our county. And eventually I will be making my way up probably to our school board and going across um, different state guidelines and just helping create the best curriculum for our students of Florida. That's amazing. I think that they're going to be so lucky to have you. So when does your program start? It starts in January. Okay, so very soon. It's very soon. I actually finished applying Thursday of last week. I got accepted last night. And I met with my academic advisor today. And it was just like, it's crazy how fast it's coming together. But that's how you know it's meant to be. That sounds like a whirlwind. (laughs) It is. It's crazy. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So I am so excited for you and for that opportunity. But how do you plan on managing your year in the classroom? Because you are face-to-face and this new master's program. 
Yeah, so I'm actually not married or I, and I don't have any kids. So I have a lot of free time in the afternoon. I do volunteer a ton at my church, but other than that, I do have so much time. Okay. I, I feel like. <laughs> That's good to know. So what does a typical school day look like for you? So I get to the school about seven o'clock and we let our students in about 7.30, um, 7.45. And I typically start a morning work process that just kind of gets them familiar with the school day once again, you know, a little bit of a reset button. And then we start about phonics. So we'll do a phonics lesson. Um, then we'll start doing a comprehensive study through um, our journeys program. So that basically entails a um, journey's book with stories in it. And then we kind of review that story. There'll be questions at the end. It goes along with our phonics text. So it helps out a ton just reiterating that continuously throughout the morning of our school day. Um, then we go into what is called centers. And that allows me to meet with students um, in a small group setting. That way I can meet with them individually and see where they're at and see, you know, what they're struggling with in our lesson particularly, because it's so hard to get to know um, where they're at in a whole group discussion. So I value our small group time so, so much. So next we will go to our special area, which allows the students to really get outside of the classroom and either go to art, music, PE, or a tech lab, and that just gets them out of the classroom and really familiar with other things that other students are doing. So they'll meet up with another class that's um, also first grade, and they will be able to just really have those connections with other classmates. Um, then we will actually go to lunch, and then we'll come back and we will do a math lesson, and then we'll do our math centers, which again, incorporating that small group instruction and then we will go outside for recess for about 30 minutes. And that is wrapping up our day. So what time does your day end? My day with the students ends at 2 o'clock. But my work schedule ends at 3. Okay. That's actually amazing. So what's the official start time and end time of your day? So my contract hours are from 7.30 to 3 o'clock. Okay. And your yep. students are there from what time to what time? From 7.15 to 2 o'clock. That is such a nice day. I know you yeah. start early, but oh, that's nice. I love it. It gives me so much time after three o'clock to do what I need to do, whether that is stay in the classroom and work on stuff for the next week or work on a new activity or just plan for a new um, anchor chart. Or I can go run errands for the rest of the day because you know how things end at five o'clock. So having those, having that open schedule just really, really is helpful. Absolutely. I think I can speak for any teacher who's listening that has a typical contract that goes till three or later. But when that two o'clock time hits, that's like a wall. It's like, okay, I need to make it past this just this hour. I don't know why, but I felt like every teacher I've ever talked to at two o'clock, they're just like, I can make it one more hour. I can make it one more hour. And maybe right. sometimes you feel that way at one o'clock because it's a little bit, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like most schools are typically like eight to three or eight to three 30 or something. Yeah. Like that. I feel like that day gets so long for students. It's honestly so, it is so early, but I would choose 7.30 every time. So during the holidays, we would typically um, be doing activities all day long. But it was just so, such a long week that it felt like those, I can make it one more hour. I can make it one more day. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So do you feel like you had a lot of stress going into your holiday break? Or do you feel like you kind of had things figured out? Going into our holiday break, no, I pretty much had everything laid out. I am typically a huge planner, so that helps out a ton, especially during, you know, that fun week right before Christmas break of having those Grinch activities or having snowman and reindeer stuff. I, I typically have it planned out about two weeks before um, our last week before Christmas break. 
That's amazing. I love that. So what kind of things do you have planned for the start of the new school year? Do you have that stuff ready yet? So for the start of the new school year, we will actually start on chapter eight, which is double digit edition. Um, and then we will go into five letter spelling words. Whoa, that's exciting. Do you like teaching spelling? I do. It's really fun putting those together. Um, spelling was my favorite subject. I can remember doing spelling bees and the spelling contests in class. So I do plan on having a spelling contest for just our class. Oh, that's really fun. So let's get into a little bit more about your classroom. Tell us about maybe some of your favorite management strategies or activities, whatever direction you want to take this in. Yeah, so our classroom management strategy is behavior um, for positivity. So we try to really focus on that positive behavior. So I have what's called a TAPS, and that's using little erasers from Target, the little Target dollar spot. Shout Absolutely. out to sponsor me <laughs> <laughs> because I spend so much on them. So just whenever I see a student doing such a good job and being such a role model, we talk a lot about role model um, characteristics and those are just really important because we're not only teaching them for right now we're teaching them for the rest of their life and that starts now it doesn't start when they're in high school it starts in pre-k and kindergarten and so just really incorporating that into our day we try to talk about it when we're reading stories when we're doing um, just different activities so taps is like I said, whenever I see a student working on good behavior, showing those characteristics, I can tap them on the shoulder and they can get up quietly and go get an eraser. So it creates this little collection for them that yeah. they get to share and they get to bond with and they get to play with on Fridays during our free center groups. And they just really, really in love it. And honestly, I think I'll keep it around for a while. Um, School-wide, we use a clip chart. And so what that is, is a make today amazing, great choices. Um, we start on ready to learn each day. And then below it, you have like a warning or a teacher's choice. And so that, um, I tend not to use that one as much as I um, do a more positive behavior system, because then it's a little bit of a um, embarrassment for them to move their clip down and it really focuses on that negative behavior instead of figuring out a way that we can you know direct it toward a more positive behavior so I like to give them choices okay so we can do this or we can do this and it kind of redirects them absolutely I love that and so now I'm wondering and I'm sure everyone else is wondering too when they're collecting these super cute erasers which I hope Target hears this and sponsors you because that yes. means I've made it too. But where are they <laughs> keeping their erasers? So they keep them in their pencil box. So at Walmart or at Target, I buy those little crayon boxes. Oh, yeah. And that's what they will keep them in. And so I use a little silhouette machine and I'll write their name on it and it'll be like eraser box or like eraser treasures. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of different names as I go along. <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't know, for anyone who's listening, I actually was just at Walmart just a few weeks ago. And I don't know why, but I mentally took a note of, oh my gosh, those boxes are still sitting there on the shelves. So you can get them any time of school year too. So if you're at Target grabbing your cute little erasers, then head to Walmart and grab your cute little boxes to put them in. They're so cute. And they're not pricey at all. They're super affordable. So if you have, you know, 20 or so students, it does not take much. No, and then, I mean, if like Michaels wants to sponsor us or Cricket, all you need to do is get something that's going to cut out your final letters. Yeah, or if you know out. somebody, knowing someone is also super great. Yes, definitely. I know the school I worked for, um, they actually had a silhouette that we could use, which was really nice. So wow. maybe the school has that too. I don't know, but that is super cool. So tell us some of the activities you like to do with your first graders. In regards to what? We do so many different activities. It's really? first grade. We're hands-on everywhere. What do you think that people want to hear? <laughs> so our activities include doing anchor charts. I try to get them out of their seats so much during the day. So we will really focus on a lot of movement and a lot of sensory activities. Um, so I like to use um, our whiteboard, for example, to call them up and do a lot of math problems on that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, then we'll do our anchor charts. And so I use a lot of sticky notes for those. Um, and it'll do a lot of placement strategy. Um, so they will identify where a key uh, main idea is or they will do a character or a setting. And so that really helps focusing on the comprehension one. And then two, it focuses on, are they really grasping what we're talking about? Um, then we'll do a lot of sensory for our centers. And so that will include really a sensory bin, which they can go in and grab. It'll usually be the start letter um, of a name. So example for like giraffes, like we'll have a bunch of stuff like with G's and stuff like that. And we'll go find the giraffe and place it there. Or we'll start doing blending sounds and then we'll get more into phonics um, as the years goes as the year goes on. Yeah. And so that'll really incorporate it. Um, other than that, um, I'm not really sure. <laughs> No, I love that you want to keep your students out of their desks. I think that's something that's so important, especially with those little busy bodies. So when you're getting them up and around mm -hmm. because of COVID, have you had anything you've had to change from last year to this year? For sure. So at the start of our year, um, we actually had to keep all of our desks about three feet apart. Okay. We didn't have um, any of the plastic pieces, pieces between them but we were able to keep them three feet apart and socially distanced. So now, um, now that we've been in the school system or in the school year, we've able to put them in pods of groups of four or less. And those actually have to be six feet apart. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So we try to keep it as so dis socially distant as possible. Um, if we're up moving around, um, they stay in their groups. So who their buddy is is who they stay with all day long. Oh, we try okay. not to do a lot of different groups. So when they go to lunch, they're sitting by the same person. When they're in their special area, they sit by their same person. And when they're in their class, they sit by the same person as well as when they're in their centers. That's a really good idea. Um, I know you said when we were talking a little bit before this that – you haven't had too many cases yet in your school. You're in a pretty small county, right? Yeah, so I live in Lake City, Florida, and it's a really small community. It's the kind of town where everybody knows everybody, your typical small town movie or country song if people are into that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we are that, and we haven't had a huge spike in cases. And I'm not really sure if that has to do with the small town or what it is, but we honestly just haven't, but we do keep our mask on majority of the day. So we, as teachers have face shields. Okay. Um, and then the students will wear a mask. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's really nice that your cases have been so low and that you kind of yes. have figured out so that kids can stay safe all day. We were definitely the county that was ready to go back to school. Okay. It, <laughs> it was, you know, just in our hearts to be back here. I remember in March watching the news and I cried because it just broke all of our hearts to not be able to even say a proper goodbye. Mm -hmm. I came back to my classroom in May with the March dates and classwork still on the board and it was eerie. And, but it's just so good to be back, you know, no matter what, you know, if I have to wear a mask all year, that's fine. No matter what we have to do, just mm -hmm. as long as these kids are, you know, in their social environment and are staying safe. Absolutely. I mean, the biggest thing is if it's right for kids, it's right. If it's best for kids, that's what we have to do. So yes. that your community and your school is being so safe. Yes. It's such a blessing. So I do have a couple more things I want to talk about. I can't believe we've already been on for 20 minutes. Time That's is crazy. crazy high. <laughs> but um, I know you mentioned earlier that you have a great way for teachers to find supplies in the beginning of the year when they're starting out their journey. Do you want to share about that? Yes. So one of my favorite projects is DIY projects. I love hitting up a Goodwill or a thrift store that's local or even not so local, but you can fit in your car and taking it home and DIYing it to fit it to your classroom because it's inexpensive, it's creative, you feel super proud of what you have accomplished and the kids love it. So I actually have a rocking chair that I got from a yard sale for about $15. Now, mind you, I was looking for a put together rocking chair, painted, sanded, everything, 
And I was running into the hundreds and I was like, I cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. So I was just walking around a yard sale and I found it for $15 and I sanded it and painted it. And it is one of my favorite pieces in my classroom. So, I love that. and it's perfect because it's perfect for story time when we were able to gather. It goes by the Christmas tree when it is holiday time, but it has a little um, desk beside it for our books and oh. so for our read alouds. And it's just so much fun to be able to say, like, okay, I created this. I created this for my students, for an environment. And it's just so much fun, too. Absolutely. And if you, if anyone who's listening, if you feel like you live in a place that doesn't have a lot of garage sales, check the Facebook marketplace. Yes. It is such a blessing to be able to have that because you can set it toward like a 50 mile radius and go find something that works for you. Absolutely. So this is not off topic, but kind of funny. This summer, um, my husband had a rocking chair that he wanted to sell and he was like, Hey, the person's coming to pick it up. Can you be available? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And so this girl shows up at my house and I was like, Oh, what are you using it for? You know, thinking like maybe a baby or something. And she's like, I'm actually using it as a teacher. I'm a first year teacher. And I'm like, no way. Where oh. I? And it was the school I used to work at and the grade I used to teach. Like, no what are we doing? Yeah. So really cool. It was act like super cool. And of course, she was able to find that chair for super cheap on Facebook. Yeah. Marketplace. Wow, that's so crazy how that inter integrated for you. Yeah, it was so neat. Like, seriously, so cool. And along with that, besides DIY projects, go to Goodwill to find books for your classroom or toys or yes. little things for your centers or whatever. So also, um, in regards to that, Kayla, I just got done with a convention. So a bunch of thrift stores got together and it was a convention called Just Be Friends. And so, uh, like I said, a lot of the consignment shops, thrift stores, Goodwills, they all come together and they donate their stuff to this big place. Um, like this year they had it in High Springs, Florida at the sports complex. So you get to walk around and I actually scored amazing AR books. And it was oh. so much fun to be able to do that. I actually got some pencils for like 50 cent and it was like a pack of like 50. So you cannot beat that. No, absolutely not. So I think you were so right when you say that. Yes. And I, I mean, I even remember our, there's a church in our town that every year they have all the people from their parish come together and make a bunch of donations. And then it's like a pay what you weigh or something like that. And so okay. I got like yoga mats and stuff as flexible seating for my students for like 50 cents. Like it was the craziest thing in the world. So check out the yard sales, check out the goodwill. It's seriously yeah. going to help you save so much money and make your students so happy. It will 100%. Well, I have seriously loved having you on here today, Miranda. I do want to know, though, do you have any other advice for first year teachers, any teachers who are getting their master's, anything like that? <laughs> so for any first year teachers out there, remember to take it easy. You don't have to do everything you for your first year. Everything is trial and error. And just know that you are doing the best that you can for your students. You know what's best for them because you're with them seven or eight hours a day. So try to take it easy on yourself. Give yourself grace. Give your students grace and know you're going to make it through it. Absolutely. Well, Miranda, if anyone wants to reach out to you, is there a way they can find you? Yeah. So my Instagram is Miranda.lhall and that's just where I post a lot of the stuff that I do in the classroom. Um, or stuff that goes on in my personal life. So you guys can just follow me. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Kayla. It was so much fun doing my first podcast. Awesome. Well, hopefully <laughs> Target sponsors you. Hopefully, <laughs> and that knows you made it. <laughs> okay, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the North Dakota Teaching Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Be sure to tune in to the next episode for more teaching tips to make an impact. Until next time.